Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the concept of limits. We will first study limits for their own sake, and then, once we have a good understanding of them, we will look at really neat applications. So, first, a bit of notation. We will write x, x being a variable, a little arrow, and then a, where a is a real number, to signify that x as a variable is approaching the value a. Let's look at an example of this. So we say x is approaching a, or x approaches a. We could write, say, x approaches the value 2. So imagine a real line for x values, and this is the value 2. And what does that mean? We say x approaches a if x is taking on values that are getting closer and closer to the value a, but never exactly equal to a. So x can be arbitrarily close to a, as close as we want it to a, but never exactly a. So for example, if you write x approaches 2, well, you could say x is equal, say first to 1.9, then we can go a little closer 1.99, a little closer still, 1.999, and so forth. So x is never exactly going to be equal to 2, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to 2. Now in this case, if you notice, all the values that we've listed are a little smaller than 2. So this is a case where we say we approach 2 from the left. So in a case like this where we write x approaches 2, and to signify that we are coming from the left hand side, that we are a little smaller than 2, we use a negative in the exponent. So this reads x is approaching 2 from the left. So x is getting closer and closer to 2, since we're from the left, always a little smaller than 2. On the other hand, we could be approaching 2 from the right. So getting closer and closer to 2, but always a little bigger. So x could be 2.1, then 2.01, a little closer, then 2.001, and so forth. Now if every value of x is getting, is a little larger than 2, then we are approaching 2 from the right. So we'll write x is approaching 2, and then we'll use a positive in the exponent to signify that x is taking on values that are getting closer and closer to 2, but that the right so always a little bigger than 2. This is called the left-hand limit, or the left-sided limit. This is called the right-hand limit, or the right-sided limit. When we write x approaches 2, we could be approaching through from the left and the right simultaneously. We could be jumping back and forth. So we could say x is 1.9, then 2.001, then 1.99998, then 2.00000004, and so forth. You see that now the values are getting closer and closer to 2 every step of the way but we're jumping from left to right, left to right, and so forth. So here we would simply say x is approaching 2. So when we write x is approaching 2, this is a so-called two-sided limit, because we are allowed to jump from the left to the right side of 2 as many times as we want. The only restriction is that the values are getting closer and closer to 2. If you specify from the left, they must all be smaller than 2, if you specify from the right, they must all be larger than 2. And that's basically it. What we usually consider, oh, one last thing, and this will be so-called limits at infinity. What if we write x approaches, and we write the symbol for infinity? What could that mean? Well, we think of infinity as something infinitely large. So we write x approaches infinity to signify x is taking on larger and larger positive values. 
so we could write say x equals 10 then 506 then 90,000 then 10 to the 8 and so forth so x is taking on larger and larger and larger values always positive and there is no upper bound x is growing as large as we want we could write obviously x approaching negative infinity if x is taking on larger and larger values but now negative values we could say x is negative 9 negative 10 to the 6 negative 10 to the 10 and so forth so x is getting larger and larger and larger but always negatively that's a notation now usually there are two variables involved we will let x approach a given fixed value, either a real number or positive or negative infinity, and then we'll ask simultaneously what happens to a different variable, say y. Here's the notation, and then we'll look at examples graphically to get a feeling for what this is actually asking. So usually we'll write as x approaches say a there will obviously be a dependence of y onto x so usually y will be a function of x and we'll ask as x is approaching a so as x is getting closer and closer to a is y approaching a value of its own so we could say as x is approaching a y is approaching say b So this would signify that when x is taking on values that are getting closer and closer to a, y is taking on values that are getting closer and closer to b. b would be called the limit of y as x approaches a. And we'll usually write it in this way. We write limit, but the shorthand lim for limit. We're asking for the limit of y, so what happens to y as x is approaching a. And this reads the limit of y as x approaches a. Now this will not always exist, but we are asking the question nonetheless. If we write this equals b, what we mean is as x is getting closer and closer to a, y is getting closer and closer to b. So that's one way of writing it. Limit of y as x approaches a is equal to b, or we can write as we did originally, as x approaches a, y approaches b. So as x keeps getting closer and closer to a, y keeps getting closer and closer to b. And that's it. Let's look at a simple example graphically. Suppose we have the following graph. y versus x, so the standard xy plane. Suppose our point of interest is, say, 3. So x equals 3. Suppose the graph at 3 is equal to 1. And suppose it looks like this. So this would be the graph of, say, y equals f of x, at least the portion of the graph around x equals 3. Now suppose that the value here for y is 2, and the value here for y, say, is negative 4. Not up to scale, but it doesn't matter. Now let's look at the few things we may look at. We can ask, well, what is the value of y at 3? So y at 3, if you prefer f of 3, well this would be equal to 1 from the graph. The exact value of y when x is exactly 3 is equal to 1. Now we can ask, what about the left hand limit? So what about the limit 
of y as x approaches 3 from the left. So now we are asking what happens to our y values as x is getting closer and closer to 3 but from the left, so a little smaller than 3. Well, so x is approaching 3 from the left. It's going to start looking like this. And now we're asking, as x is approaching 3 from the left, what happens to the y values? Well, if you take this value first, here's the corresponding y value. Get a little closer to 3 from the left, here's the y value. Get even closer, here's the y value. And you can see that as x is approaching 3 from the left, the y values are getting closer and closer to negative 4. So as x is approaching 3 from the left, the y values are approaching negative 4. And so we write that the left-hand limit is negative 4. What about the right-hand limit? The limit as x approaches 3 from the right. Well, now we are letting x approach 3 from the right, so we take slightly larger values than 3 and we are letting them get closer and closer and closer to 3. Let's look at the corresponding y values. It's the first y value, then the second, then the third, and so on. And you can see as x approaches 3 from the right, the y values seem to be approaching y equals 2. And now you can ask, well, okay, what about the two-sided limit? What about asking the question, what is the limit of y as x approaches 3? And now we're not specifying from the left or from the right. Well, if you look here, when you let x approach 3, you are allowing x to range from smaller than 3 and larger than 3. And you see there seems to be a problem, because on the left of 3, y is approaching negative 4. On the right of 3, y is approaching positive 2. So because both values here are not equal, the limit, that is a two-sided limit, actually is undefined. It does not exist. As x is to the left of 3, the y values are closer and closer to negative 4. As x is to the right of 3, the y values are getting closer and closer to 2. As the two values are different, the two-sided limit actually does not exist. And this will be the conclusion for this video. The only way for a limit to exist, that is a two-sided limit, is for the left-sided and the right-sided limit to both exist and be equal. And this will be our conclusion. So the limit, as x approaches a, of y, say, equals b, if and only if, this means an equivalence, and if and only if the symbol is a two-headed arrow, so this means if and only if, it is the logical equivalent of the equal sign, so we can only say that y approaches b as x approaches a, if and only if, as we approach a from the left, y also approaches b, and the same is true of y as x approaches a from the right. So if the limit of y as x approaches a from the left equals the limit of y as x approaches a from the right, then both sided limits, the left sided and the right sided limits are equal, then we can conclude that the two sided limit also exists and is also equal to b. This will be useful sometimes as we'll see further examples where the original limit may be ambiguous and then we'll have to look separately at the limit from the left and then the limit from the right. But graphically, there is nothing more going on at this point. In our next videos, we will consider limits algebraically and their properties and different techniques to evaluate them when we have subtle cases.